Well, hi there, boys and girls. This is Mr. Mark, and I believe this is our last video on thermodynamics. The last thing we have to learn about is the rate at which heat gets transferred through a material via the process of conduction. So before we get into the new stuff, let's kind of quickly review what exactly that word heat means. Remember that the um, particles in a substance can exchange energy via collisions. The same thing is true when you have two substances or two objects which are touching each other. Now in this case, when I say object, that could mean um, a solid object like we're accustomed to, or it could mean part of a solid object, or it could mean a gas or a liquid. And so kind of using the term object loosely here. So we're talking about when two things are in contact with each other. So if this picture represents something that's hot, touching something that is cold, then the energy can be transferred from the cold particles to from the hot particles when they collide. So remember that in collisions between particles, particles will tend to slow down if they were moving fast and they will tend to speed up when they were moving slow. So on average, they all average out. So my picture may now go to looking more like this, where we still have some cold, slow particles on the right and some fast particles on the left. But on average, we have about the same number of hot cold and medium particles on both sides. Eventually the average energy or temperature is the same throughout both substances. When that's true we say that they are in thermal equilibrium. Remember that heat refers to the amount of energy that is transferred during this process. So if we went from having for instance, the left hand sample having a thousand joules of energy and then end up having 700 joules of energy after it reached thermal equilibrium, then the amount of heat that was transferred would be 300 joules. So remember, heat is the amount of energy that is actually transferred. So a lot of times, rather than thinking about heat as being energy transferred back and forth during collisions, we kind of treat heat as something that can flow from one place to another. Now that's not the case, that's not actually what's happening, but it is a useful tool to help us understand um, and help us um, like derive equations and such. So what we'll typically do, is we have two objects that are in contact with each other, We'll just diagram the energy transfer, energy transfer or the heat, like being kind of like an arrow, like stuff is going from left to right. So it's kind of a shorthand notation for the amount of energy that's being transferred. So in this picture, we go from warm object and a cold object to two medium objects, and then we diagram the heat transfer with an arrow like that. So again, it's just a shorthand notation for the energy that's exchanged. It doesn't represent something actually moving from one to another. It just kind of gives us the average energy transferred during all those collisions. So how quickly does this process happen? What factors affect how quickly this process will happen? Um, to kind of give us an idea and a place to start, Consider some random object that has a length L and a cross-sectional area A. So it might look something like that. If heat's going to flow from one side to the other, then there needs to be a temperature difference between um, the left end of the right end. So we need to have them at different temperatures. So call that T1 and T2. 
it doesn't really matter which one's higher. And what's really important for determining the rate of heat transfer is the temperature difference. So of these factors, the length, the area, and the temperature difference, two of them are going to cause the rate of heat transfer to get bigger. One of them will cause it to get smaller. So the rate of heat transfer we typically symbolize as Q over delta T. We measured in joules per second. And that's the energy transferred from one end of the rod, or object, whatever it is, per each second. Two things that are going to increase the rate of heat transfer are the area and the change in temperature, the difference in temperature, rather. The length of the object, or L, is going to um, decrease the rate of heat transfer when it gets larger. So the rate of heat transfer is inversely proportional to the length. So we can kind of put that all together in a relatively simple equation. The rate of heat transfer, A and delta T, go on top, and L goes on bottom. And then that letter K in there represents the thermal capacity of that particular object. The thermal capacity is a property of the material, and it's a fundamental property. So iron, for example, will always have the same value of K, thermal capacity. These are things that are measured, and then when you need to look them up, you can look them up. The unit for the thermal capacity would be joules per second times meter times Kelvin. So all those on bottom of the fraction. And that way our um, unit for the rate of heat transfer is joules per second. The larger the value of the thermal capacity is, the faster heat is going to, trans is going to be um, transferred through that particular material. Typically, metals have higher thermal capacities than other materials. The reason being is they conduct heat very well. Those free electrons in a metallic um, substance are what allows that heat energy to be transferred very well because they can collide, uh, move around a lot. So because metals typically have a higher value of K, that's why they typically feel cooler or warmer than other materials that are in them or that are around them. Um, they conduct heat to and from your hand faster than other materials. So for instance, uh, if you touch something in a cold room that's made out of metal, it'll typically feel colder, but it's not really colder than the other things. It just conducts heat away from your hand faster. And that is the end of our thermodynamics unit. Ta-ta!